In this video, I'm going to be talking about potassium additives in foods. And the information in this video is actually just a small part of our CKD and diabetes course. And in that course, I go over about a dozen different things that can be causing high potassium levels and what you can do about them. So this is just a small sneak peek of that. And I'll include a link to that course if you want to learn more about it. But the information in this video is not just for people with CKD and diabetes. This can really apply to anyone who has kidney disease and is struggling with their potassium levels whether you're stage three or even on dialysis. Now, if you're familiar at all with my videos or my website, you probably hear me talk a lot about phosphorus additives and how bad they are for your health. But you probably haven't heard me mention potassium additives and there's a couple of different reasons for that. First, a lot of people don't need to worry about their potassium levels. And if your doctor or dietitian hasn't told you to limit your potassium intake, then I don't wanna overcomplicate your food choices by adding yet another thing you need to look for with your foods. Second, I don't really have any good evidence that potassium additives are absorbed any differently than natural potassium, whereas I know that phosphorus additives are absorbed more, which means they raise your phosphorus levels more. If I have a food with 200 milligrams of potassium in it, it doesn't matter whether it's natural potassium or a potassium additive, the same amount of potassium is probably going to be absorbed into your body. Whereas with a phosphorus additive, I know that way more of the phosphorus additives will be absorbed than the natural phosphorus. And if you want to learn more about phosphorus additives, I'll also include a link to a good video on that in the description of this video. Also, unlike phosphorus, potassium is frequently listed on the food label, not always, and we will talk about that more in just a minute. But more often than not, you can find out how much potassium is in a food. So you can look at the label and see whether or not the food you're eating is high in potassium. Now, that being said, people don't always read food labels. If you have kidney disease, one of the best habits that you can get yourself into is to learn how to read food labels and to always read them. I cannot stress that enough. Food labels are your friend. But we don't always read them, and sometimes we can get sidetracked by some of the other nutrients on the label, and this is where potassium additives can really add up. Let's take a look at some example foods that have crazy high potassium amounts that you wouldn't expect. First up, soup. Soup can be a problematic food for people with kidney disease. Soup is often loaded with sodium, crazy amounts of sodium. Like you could get your whole day's worth of sodium just from a bowl of soup. It's wild. Uh, and, the, and, and soup manufacturers, they know that. And so they come up with these reduced sodium and low sodium versions of their soups to make you think that these are healthier. This can of Progresso Hardy Minestrone is a good example. A typical can of Progresso Minestrone contains about 1,550 milligrams of sodium, and they managed to reduce that to only 1,010 milligrams of sodium. And let's just pause and appreciate that this reduced sodium soup is still way high in sodium. It's definitely not a low sodium product. Um, but anyways, we're focusing on potassium here. The way that they were able to reduce the sodium without the soup tasting terrible is they replace it with potassium chloride. Potassium chloride is the main ingredient in a lot of salt substitutes. So anytime you see a food that is reduced sodium or low sodium, you should check and see how much potassium is in the food. This one can of reduced sodium soup contains 1,450 milligrams of potassium. That's almost three and a half bananas worth of potassium. And Interestingly, the regular minestrone also contains potassium chloride, so it's not just the reduced sodium versions that are gonna contain it. Let's look at another reduced sodium product, though. Let's compare regular V8 and reduced sodium V8. Now, regular V8 has 470 milligrams of potassium per serving, while the reduced sodium V8 has a whopping 850 milligrams of potassium. And a serving is only 45 calories. The reduced sodium V8 contains 18 times as much potassium as calories. And for context, a banana usually contains about four times as much potassium in calories. So having 18 times as much potassium is just ridiculous. Uh, let's look at a protein shake, the Atkins Dark Chocolate Royale Shake. And let's just ignore for a moment all of the phosphorus additives in this shake um, and the fact that if you have CKD and you're not on dialysis, you definitely don't need a protein shake. Let's just look at the potassium additives. This shake contains at least four different additives that include potassium. And if you take a look at the nutrition information, you can see that this shake contains 800 milligrams of potassium. 800 in this little 160 calorie shake. 
that is five times as much potassium as calories. And this is pretty common in shakes. A lot of them will contain potassium additives, which means a lot of them will be very high in potassium. This example is not a one-off or an exception, so definitely take a look at any shakes that you might be drinking. Let's take a look at another example that isn't necessarily claiming to be reduced sodium. Let's look at this Lean Cuisine Herb Roasted Chicken. This little frozen meal contains 960 milligrams of potassium. And maybe you're thinking, oh, but Lauren, I saw the box. It has potatoes. It's definitely the potatoes that are driving up the potassium. Okay, I agree, potatoes are high in potassium, but I can actually pretty accurately estimate how much of this potassium is coming from the potatoes. The meal contains about 16 grams of carbohydrates, and if we assume that all of those carbs are coming from those high potassium potatoes, it would only come out to about 294 milligrams of potassium. That is the most potassium that can possibly be coming from the potatoes in this meal. So where are the other 660 milligrams coming from? Well, the meal does contain chicken and chicken and other animal proteins are actually fairly high in potassium. So some of the potassium is gonna be coming from the chicken, but realistically only about 200 milligrams or less are gonna be naturally coming from the chicken. So we're still trying to figure out where the other 460 milligrams are coming from. And if you dig into the ingredient list, you can see that potassium is listed a few different times. So I'm guessing that the remaining 460 milligrams of potassium is coming from these additives. So basically, a large banana's worth of potassium has been added to this meal without anyone really realizing it. Now, one thing I wanna point out is the chicken here. Highlighted here are all the ingredients in the chicken. You can see that it includes both potassium and phosphorus additives. Potassium and phosphorus additives are very common in meat products, and we usually call these enhanced meats. The additives are put in there to enhance the flavor and juiciness of the meat, and they can really add up. Depending on how much is added, they can easily double or triple the amount of potassium in meat. Now, there's a problem with figuring out how much potassium is in enhanced meats. With all the examples I've done so far, we could look at the food label and see exactly how much potassium was in the food. With meat products, they aren't required to put potassium on the labels. And when manufacturers aren't required to put something on a label, they usually don't. Let me show you an example of these ham cubes. These ham cubes definitely contain added potassium, as you can see here on the ingredient list. But looking at the nutrition facts, you'll have no idea how much because it isn't listed. And it can be really tempting to assume that if it isn't listed, then it must be zero. But this could not be further from the truth. Now, for this particular example, I was able to find an entry in the USDA food database where they did at one point report the potassium content of these ham cubes. And according to that, each two ounce serving has 460 milligrams of potassium. So more than six and a half times as much potassium as calories. A typical two ounce serving of pork should only have about 200 milligrams of potassium in it. So they added quite a bit of potassium to this product. So if you're struggling with potassium, I hope you'll take a closer look at some of the processed foods that you're eating instead of assuming that it's the fruits and vegetables in your life that are always causing your problems. Always check to see how much potassium is listed on the label to see if it's a lot. And if it isn't listed, then you definitely need to be scanning that ingredient list for potassium additives, especially in the case of enhanced meats. And if you want to learn more about what else could be causing potassium problems in CKD, along with a ton of other great information about managing kidney disease, I hope you'll check out some of our courses. Thanks.